Hello guys, and it's time for another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Asus 3060 Ti OC Edition. Short overview for this card right here. This features the GPU, which is a Ampere architecture uh, GA104 chip inside there that is bundled up together with eight gigabytes of RAM. That is uh, a GDDR6 RAM and its base clock is of 1410 megahertz. Its TDP is not very high. It only sits at 200 watts. So that's why it's uh, quite enough for it to only have one eight pin connector right here that it's uh, enough to actually support this GPU with all the power that it needs. And this thermal design feels actually quite good with the two uh, rather big, I would say for it, uh, fans on its side here. And I would say that the thermal design should be quite good because look at all this heat sink. It runs all the way across the entire board. And that's really nice to see for a GPU nowadays. On the back of it right here, it actually features a uh, back plate, which is metal. And it has uh, a lot of cutouts, I would say for all the important bits on the card so you shouldn't be running into any sort of thermal limitations as long as you have enough airflow in your case. It actually states right there on the box that you feature a discrete light in the GPU right here and you do have actually a small LED uh, yeah right there underneath the Asus logo. That's what you get for the amount of money that you're paying for this card and Asus was really nice enough to give you that LED for it. One other little feature that Asus has thrown in there was this, uh, well, little toggle switch right here for the BIOS settings of this card. So you do have a quiet mode and a performance mode. Just make sure to use it before you actually turn on your PC, not when it's in operation. On the back of the card right here, you got two HDMI 2.1 connectors right here and three 1.4A display ports. Even though this GPU right here features only 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, it is quite capable giving you access to DLSS and ray tracing according to Nvidia. And not only that, but it's actually a 256 uh, bits uh, bus width and it gives you a 448 gigabits per second bandwidth. This GPU right here for the amount of money that you are going to pay for it, um, I've seen it go for around $500 depending on, uh, well, your local markets, but I've seen it actually go a little bit less than that because it was Black Friday recently. But anyway, this should give you quite a good performance in games with 1080p, so I should see it go well above 100 frames per second with very high settings depending on some AAA games. But you should actually get some very decent results even with uh, 2K resolutions with very high settings uh, that should actually easily surpass 60 frames per second. And we'll definitely get to that once we get to do some testing in some games but I would say that for the amount of money that you are paying for this card you can boost it up from its base frequency of 1400 megahertz all the way up to 1750 megahertz and should be quite good for the amount of money that you are going to pay for it. The thermal design on this GPU is actually quite impressive as well because it runs the entire length of the card and it is actually quite a good thing because you shouldn't get any sort of thermal issues with this GPU especially since it's only running 8 gigabytes of RAM. On paper and before we put it in the computer, this GPU looks quite promising. So right now I think it's time to put it in the PC and see exactly what we can throw at it and the results that we are going to get. So guys, here we have Doom running at 1440p, Ultra Nightmare, everything set to high, and I did set the vertical sync to off, and the game is running quite smooth. Uh, anywhere in between 150 to 200 FPS, this is what you can get. Uh, I had some problems with occasional glitches on the screen, uh, as you can see here and there. I'm pretty sure this is a software thing from Nvidia, it has nothing to do with the game, but anyway, the game was running quite smoothly. And as you can see, the card was uh, handling itself quite good. Uh, it was running anywhere in between, as you can see, 16, 
1500 to 1900 megahertz with uh, all the way up to its uh, rated capacity of 200 watts but anyway the temperature of the gpu was quite pleasant uh, as you can see it's hovering at around 60 to 70 percent uh, or i should say 70 degrees and uh, well it's running at its full memory bandwidth which is close to 8 gigabytes Next in line guys, we're talking about a very challenging game for this uh, for this card right here, which is uh, of course Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, as you can see, everything is set on high, on ultra, with uh, we have the DLSS enabled and the resolution is only set to 1080p this time around because I wasn't really sure that 1440p is an actual uh, good gaming performance. But even with everything set to high for 1080p, as you can see, the the, the card here is working, uh, well, it's, it's working just as hard as Doom with 200 watts of power being drawn and around 1800 to 1900 megahertz. And it, it, is, it does actually jump up after about 25 minutes of running this game to around uh, 75 to low 80s. But uh, it is handling itself quite good. And as you can see, the memory usage of this card it sits anywhere in between to, um, well, 7 gigabytes to 8 gigabytes of the card. The FPS, on the other hand, as you can see, we're not nearly at the performance of Doom with uh, over 150. But it is actually handling itself quite good, even in this crowded environment in the city here with, uh, well, just, I would say, under 60 FPS and uh, constantly over 50 to 55 FPS, which is actually quite nice to see for a gaming card with such a demanding AAA title with uh, NVIDIA Ray Tracing enabled and the LSS as well. Right after that, we have another AAA gaming, which I thought it would be interesting to uh, to try on this card here. And as you can see, 1440p once again is the resolution that we are testing for. We have everything set on like the uh, DX12. We have the upscaling set 100%, and all of the details are set on uh, well ultra or as high as they would go. So that's uh, definitely something that I wanted to test out because if you're buying a new graphics card in this day and age, of course, you're going to be trying to get the most out of it. And uh, well, as you can see, the game itself is actually handling itself quite good. Even in this environment where everything is quite hectic, as you can see a big battle going on, lots of visual effects everywhere. The GPU itself is actually quite okay. It's sitting anywhere in between 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. And once again, it's reaching its maximum, or I should say even above its maximum rating, which is 1920 megahertz and just shy of 200 watts of power. Uh, even though this is the case, it actually uses less memory uh, bandwidth than the previous two AAA games. And as you can see, we're just hovering at around 6.5 gigabytes of video RAM memory that is being drawn from the card. With all of this in mind, as you can see, the performance is actually quite good. We're running anywhere over 70 FPS to low 90 FPS with all the settings, uh, even on 1440p. And uh, well, that makes me a pretty happy camper because uh, I have faith in this GPU. I actually have faith that this GPU can actually perform quite well even for the upcoming years. So is this card a great deal for you and should you get this card? Well, I think it all comes down to the local markets and what offers you can find this uh, GPU going for. But I would say my personal opinion is that this is worth around $300 to $350, not more. Due to the fact that it actually has only 8 gigabytes of RAM on it and the RAM that it does have is not GDDR6X, it's only GDDR6. And in my humble opinion is the fact that, well, you're looking to future-proof yourself whenever you're buying some new hardware. So, of course, you're not just going to throw that money out the window. You want to get the best you can get from your hardware for the maximum amount of years just go moving forward. And although this is quite a decent car for 1440p gaming right now, I'm not pretty sure that this is still going to be the case uh, a few years moving down the line with the new AAA games that are supposed to come out. Other than this, what I like about the card is that it is very small. Uh, it, it's only 200 watts TDP and I've seen in some games it actually pushes up to 200 watts and some other games don't really push it all that much. It went up to 1800 megahertz which is really nice to see on this card right here and it is, I think it was a pretty smooth and uh, silent experience overall regarding the AAA games that I threw at it. So that was pretty nice to see. I think that the heat dissipation is actually quite good on this GPU right here because it has a metal backplate so that's pretty nice to see for this price point from Asus. And uh, overall, I'm pretty. I pretty like. I pretty much like the card. It has this uh, little uh, BIOS switch right here, in, uh, so you can switch in between performance and silent mode. And that's really nice to see. Whenever you're not using the card very much, it goes into silent mode, which means that these fans don't spin. So yeah, this is pretty much what you can get out of this GPU right here. Um, I think it's 
decent for around 350 ish dollars not more than that but definitely the price uh, it's up to you and of course it's up to you if you are truly thinking that this card it's worth you investing in it the other nice perk of this card definitely is that it only has one 8 pin connector right here which is a bit stretched because it goes all the way up to 200 watts but that's uh, I think pretty much within the acceptable limits for Asus that's why it only has one connector right here and you do get one very little subtle LED light right here whenever you mount this card in your PCIe slot so yeah that's pretty much all that you can get out of this card from Asus so um, so this has been my review of the 3060 OCTI from Asus, that's a mouthful, but thank you very much guys for choosing to watch today's video with me, stick around, maybe subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next one.